Ross Covington, Archer, you're not Covington anymore, but whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. You are Covington K. still? K. Ross Covington. K. Ross Covington, I like it. Starting January 4th, we're doing our reviews again. That's right, it's a huge show. Oh, the Monday Night Wars begin, huh? I, it's gonna at least be for a week. At least for a week, I figure. It's either gonna be, we're either going to do Bret Hart in WWE or going Hogan in TNA. Fans, Maybe. Well, you decide. Let's see. What do you, you like? You like Bret Hart. Love Bret Hart. And I like Hogan and Bischoff. Love them too, actually. So why don't we have a little challenge? Okay. You review WWE, I'll review TNA, we'll see who has a better show. I like that. I like Interested? that. Interested? I'm interested. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, as long as we're plugging shows, uh, ADTV Awards for 2009, the yes. award show's coming on New Year's Eve. So we'll Ooh. upload that about 5 p.m. on the 31st, and that way if you're home and you're not drunk yet, you can enjoy the ADTV Awards, Manager <laughs> of the Year, Tag Team of the Year. All that good stuff. Late, uh, you know, Sweetheart, Lady of the Year, Promotion of the Year. It's going to be fun. Also starting in January, Classic 1333, Myself, The Wrestling Show, and The Unsquared Circle have a special treat in, st in store for all of you YouTube fans. Mm -hmm. We are straight taking YouTube over. Uh -oh. Not going to say how, not going to say, you know, all the particulars, but all I know is us four coming together and the world is going to blow the hell up. That's I'm all excited I know. about that. The Wrestling Show, ADTV. That's right. Um, Unsquared, Unsquared Circle. Circle and Classic 1333. All of us on the same page, busting it out. Wow. Let's jump right into this. we got three different segments of this show. Okay. It's the top ten matches of the decade, the top ten promos and storylines de of the decade, and the uh -huh. top ten fuck-ups of the decade. That's <laughs> right. But we're going to get to the good stuff first. Let's jump right into the top ten matches of the year. Number... Of the year? Of the, oh, I'm sorry, of the decade. Of the decade. It's yeah, a long decade. Yeah, it sure is. Number 10 match of the decade. That's right. That's Sean versus Ric Flair at WrestleMania 24. Number 9, which is Chris Jericho versus Shawn Michaels in the latter match at No Mercy of 2008. Mm. Number 8 was Angle versus Lesnar, WrestleMania 19. That was a phenomenal match. Great match. Number 7, one of my personal favorites, Angle. Versus your boy, Eddie Guerrero. What a lady. That's right. Number six. You want to take that for me? Oh, great. Shawn, Shawn Michaels versus the Blundermaker at WrestleMania 25 and the Flying Plancha from Hell. <laughs> <laughs> they got Teddy Taker's head ripped off. I figured you'd get some enjoyment out of that one. <laughs> hey. Number five. This is a match that most people did not see, which you should go out and definitely take a look at. It's probably on YouTube, it's, which is Takeshi Morishima mm -hmm. versus Brian Danielson in the Manhattan Center at ROH uh, in 2007. Oh, wow. This match blew the fucking doors off. I haven't seen that yet. How do I say I go to, I guess I go to YouTube? Yeah, go to YouTube or actually check out Ring of Honor. They probably have that on D DVD, actually. Oh, somewhere. okay. And speaking of Ring of Honor, I'll take this one as well. Me and King Fred saw this. This is one of the best matches we ever saw as far as a tag team match. This was at the Man Up pay-per-view, the first ever ladder match in, in ROH history. Mm -hmm. The Briscoe brothers, Jay and Mark, they defeated Kevin Steen and El Generico oh, wow. in like a 30 minute ladder match that was just non-stop action lucha. you know there was some lucha involved in this <laughs> let's go at number 3 take that for a big dog uh, the Kurt Angle 3 match feud with Samoa Joe back in 2006 the first victory ended Joe's undefeated streak that was pretty phenomenal yeah it was that's that number, number 3 wow we're getting excited number 2 the Triple Threat TLC match, the first two at WrestleMania 17 and at SummerSlam 2000, about three or four months later. That, of course, is with the Hardys, Dudleys, and Edge and Christian. Woo wee! I mean, wow. I have never seen a TLC match before. That was the first one, and wow. Yeah. I gotta say, bar none, this is one of the best matches I've ever seen, but it takes does not take the cake to this one. My personal favorite. Number one? Number one. Jericho becoming the undisputed champion. That's right. He pinned The Rock and Stone Cold in the same one night. night. Nobody saw it coming. Nobody. I have to agree. It's one of my personal favorites of all time. And especially when Stone Cold beat Kurt Angle. 
in the, in the match you know, preceding it because it was like a, it was like the little King of the Ring thing type setup for the tournament for the championship. I was just amazed. I mean, yeah. I thought for nobody, sure nobody. Jericho's going to job to Stone Cold. But right. it didn't happen. Jericho kicked out of both of their finishing moves yep. and won the matches. That was amazing. Bottom line, that was the match of the decade. It, it, it was just awesome. Flat I'd like out. to add one more somewhere around six and four. Give me some would honorable be, mentions. Uh, uh, the championship match when Eddie Guerrero beat Brock Lesnar for the belt. With the uh, turn the F five into a oh, tornado DDT right. off the belt. That's right. That was one of the best matches I ever saw. And of course, um, uh, Rob Van Dam versus Brock Lesnar as well was okay. was twenty five minute match on, nat on national television. It was and it never bored. It okay. Never bored. So. I'll give you that. Those are two great honorable. Now matches. we got storylines. Top ten storylines. Promos of the decade. Oh, you're definitely gonna have to take number ten. <laughs> oh, of course, they're rated our live sex show with Edge and Lita. I mean, wow. that was awesome. I, I must loved be it. pissing off CM Punk. <laughs> Number nine, ah, oh, a Bischoff invention. HLA, hot lesbian action. Man, don't you wish you still could keep that going? Oh. And, and another, can I take another Bischoff? Go for it. The invention of the Elimination Chamber. That's right, that's number eight. And let's see, number seven, Jeff and Jerry start TNA. Wow. Yep, the Jarrett start TNA. I wonder TNA. where that started, maybe like at a Burger King or... No, down there, it's like it was at a Sherry's or a Waffle House. <laughs> Waffle House. <laughs> it also wasn't Roscoe's Women Raffles. Number six. <laughs> Stone Cold and Kurt Angle's promos during the evasion angle. That was some great shit, especially with Stone Cold playing the little kumbaya guitar. <laughs> that shit was hilarious. Number five. That's uh, WWE, take it. All right, they relaunched the Hall of Fame back in 2004. I was actually, that was a great idea. I was impressed with this. Vince did a good job. Uh, number four, the introduction of the Money in the Bank concept at WrestleMania. Yeah. And I think this is the one that began all the themed pay-per-views. <laughs> I really do. You think so? I think this is how it all started. <laughs> Number three, Vince gets blown up in his limo. Oh. That was great. You didn't like that? Well, I thought the storyline was awesome. He actually was dead off TV for almost a year. You know, uh, from what I understood, from the information I'm getting from my sources, that ROH was kind of built on the principle of Chris Benoit. And it was unfortunate that Chris had to pass away yeah. during the promo because... Can you imagine what the, where they would have gone with that with Vince? He still might be dead. Yeah. They might have had a funeral. They might have had all kinds of stuff. But they had us going. They had us going. Number two. You can take that one. Oh, for me. Shane O'Mac buys WCW. <laughs> the name on the contract says McMahon. But it doesn't say Vince McMahon. It says Shane, Shane McMahon. McMahon. Later, later makes sense. How can sense. anybody forget that? It's imprinted in my memory. It was, and that actually brings us to another subject. Oh. You know. Number, Number one, one and yeah. I totally agree with this. You think so? Jericho's promo on The Rock when he first came into the WWF. Uh, bar none, one of the best promos back and forth between two performers I have ever seen in history. Bottom line, it was great stuff.